Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and we're back at it again with a novel pay-per-view event WWE. It's your boy from the UK reacting as always. You know how it is guys. I, remember first of all remember to subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share as well, share across all social media platforms, press the notification bell so you can be the first person to watch anything that comes out brand spanking new on Red United TV and of course follow the all the social media platforms as you can see there and last but not least Bet, Bet US has proudly partnered with Red United TV. So if you are from the States or you just want to get an account since you like placing bets, you can always join up with Bet US. Click the link description as well. You can get a little bonus or use Red United TV caps for you guys. Of course, make sure you caps Red United TV to get 125%. I think it's a cash bonus or, or bonus. You will get a bonus of some sort. As always, again, follow all the social media platforms. But let's get straight into it because it is the WWE Clash of the Castle at Cardiff. It's been 30 years, guys. It's been 30 years since WWE finally done a pay-per-view event in the UK. And I've been waiting for it. I've been like, what the hell's going on? How come we haven't had one in Wembley Stadium? And it came to it, guys. Unfortunately, it was in Cardiff. 62,000 people were there in attendance. What a night it was, guys. And, and look, I can do a reaction video straight after the event because it's in the UK. So hi-hi to those United States. Hi-hi to everyone else who's watching at this peculiar time that you've never, ever had an event at this time. But let's get straight into it, guys, because, of course, we go with the first match of the night, Bianca Belair versus... Versus... Uh, I'm sorry, Bianca Belair, Oscar, Alexa Bliss versus Bailey, the Coda um, Sky, and of course, Io Sky. It's so hard to pronounce this. It's a bit of a tongue twister, guys. Bear with me because it is a tongue twister. Yes. Of course, they've been having beef. You know, it's been an interesting one because it's been a fraction of Bailey. Dakota Sky and AO Sky causing havocs in the women's dressing room. And I was wanting to see, like, I can tell that B Bailey will be challenging Bianca Belair. It's just obvious. It, no, you know that they're building up the story for it. But to have them guys show up to build their story as well, Dakota Sky and IO Sky as well, it's going to mean something. But it was all about the first opener. The first opener started off well. With Bailey. I was so interested to see what Bailey can do now that she's back in the mix as well. She had the moments where she was getting herself involved, but Bianca Belair, because Oscar and Alexa Bliss guys, they 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 were nothing. They 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 weren't really much involved. It was all about Bianca Belair, pure strength, strength, brutality, and handling the majority of everything that was coming towards them. But it's just unfortunate that this woman here, of course, as you can see there, Bailey outsmarted her and it was going to be one of those matches where you have to use your brain and outsmart your opponents and what did Bailey do she grabbed hold of Bianca Belair's hair yes Bianca was like get your hands out of my hair referee my head but the ref couldn't do anything about it it was perfectly legal Bailey was smart and guess what happened after that Sky herself capitalized with a moon so on these two unfortunately, on Bianca Belair for this woman right here to just pin the Raw Women's Champion. One, two, three. Bailey was just too good, too smart, and outthinking Bianca Belair. And guess what? Now she's got one upon Bianca Belair, and it's going to be an interesting one because, of course, the next pay-per-view, I'm expecting to see Bailey versus Bianca Belair. I know you guys are expecting that as well. Going into the next fight, shh. Gunter versus Sheamus. Woo. <laughs> if anyone you think that was gonna match Sheamus brutality and Sheamus sheer brute force everything about him, the strength, it's going to be someone like the Ring General Gunter. Yes, the Ring General showed exactly Sheamus what he's about and it was a dominating first after the match against Sheamus. Sheamus, you can see, you can see that it was battered 
and bruised at times. Yes, Sheamus did well to try and come back halfway through the fight, showing exactly resilience and still, you know, that he has to the Irish, is it Irish ass or Irish last kicker, whatever you call him. Yes, Sheamus showed himself, but Gunther, the ring general, was just too much for Sheamus. Eventually, Sheamus found himself losing with the ring general, absolutely giving him a devastating, disgusting clothesline that they call Larry Kate. I don't even know how to pronounce it properly, man. But that clothesline took the shit out of Sheamus. Knocked his soul out of his soul. Get me, the spirit was just gone. And of course, him as well. Ending up losing. Sheamus, unfortunately, getting pinned one, two, three. Look at that. He just looked like a bruised man. Gunther showing exactly his brute force. And of course, the match did start off a bit interesting because he's got their sidemans. Gunter Sideman and Shaman Sideman kicking it off as well, having it. But at the end of the day, it was it was all about them two, and them two did it well, and it was a fight, and I enjoyed every single bit of it. Moving on to this woman right here, of course, Liv Morgan, the WWE SmackDown champion versus Shayna Baszler, the MMA fighter. Yes, Shayna Baszler has been. Bullying the hell out of Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan living her dream being the champion as well. She's been living the dream since she was a young and she, young age, and she finally got to do that by beating, of course, the baddest woman on the block, Ronda Rousey, which was a controversial as well. Like, let's be honest with you. The last fight as well was also controversial. So, so Liv Morgan still is lucky to be current champion. But yes, getting into that fight as well. <sighs> Shayna Blazer done with exactly what she had to do. She showed Liv Morgan exactly what she was made out of, beating the heck out of her at times during the match. Liv Morgan done whatever she had to do to survive. She somehow finds a way, guys. She's like a cat with nine lives. She's finding it. She's probably on her like her seventh life right now with all these strong competitors that she comes up against and she still finds a way to win. Whether it's controversial, or she, whether she deserves it, it is what it is with Liv Morgan. And Liv Morgan did exactly what she did against Rhea Ripley, finding a way to win with the Liv Morgan delivering an oblivion to Shayna Baszler as well. Baszler, sorry. Baszler getting pinned one, two, three, and it was so damn over. Huh, Liv Morgan does it again. Big up to Liv Morgan for her win. Like, you just keep doing it. And I was so against you winning as well. I thought, you know what? Guys, and you know it's true. Shayna Baszler in an any day fight against Liv Morgan, you know Shayna Baszler's whooping the ass out of Liv Morgan. But Liv Morgan has nine lives. She's a cat with nine lives and she's getting away with it and she's winning. Big up to Liv Morgan. Big up to you. Like, seriously, guys. But the night got even better as well because shocking events turn around with these guys fighting. Yes, yes, these guys fighting Edge and Rey Mysterio partnering up to fight the Judgment Day. And you know, guys, that this beef has been going on for a while, for a couple of weeks. The Judgment Day targeting Edge and taking him out and then, then tar taking it out on them with Mysterious, talking to them, having back-to-back -back fights and pay-per-views. These guys just, they're manic, they're crazy. But what a fight it was, Swole. Well, Edge and these two right here, let's pick up to these two. They've done what they can do in terms of building up a partnership because Edge and Rey Mysterio did well. Combining together, causing moves in themselves, getting themselves involved. And of course, Rhea Ripley, as you know, got herself involved as well. And what? That's what Dominic Mysterio got himself involved. But then end up with these two and winning the fight. Oh. It was it was a it was a um, six one nine and then of course with an edge with the spear to of that loser himself the prince Finn Balor getting the one two three but then surprisingly which I sensed it guys and you guys felt it a couple of weeks ago during Raw SmackDown I mean during SmackDown episode and last you was feeling that. Maybe Dominic might be turning heel, especially the last uh, um, the last episode on SmackDown where Dominic gave 
the weapon straight to Rio Ripley, like he was on some kind of illusion, some kind of command. I just don't know whether she's done, she's mind fucked him, which I think she has. You know, the way she's been carrying him on her shoulders and everything, like just mind fucking the hell out of him, you know. Yep, Dominic did something that was completely shocking. And as you can see there, guys, wow. Attacking Edge when they won the fight. And then knocking out his father, Rey Mysterio, with a punch. Surprisingly, it is true. Will Dominic be joining the Judgment Day? I think he will be doing that. We shall find out next time, probably on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. We will find out because it was shocking. What a shocking behavior by Dominic. But then again, I saw it coming, guys. You saw it coming. Can't believe this. And then, the fight that I've been waiting for for a long time. This was sheer rivalry. Sheer rivalry indeed. Matt Riddle versus Seth freaking Rowling. And Seth, the manipulator, the mind manipulator, the, 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 the evolutionary, the revolutionary. Seth freaking Rowling doing what he had to do against Riddle. And Riddle... Put up a fight, put up a fight, got somewhere at the end. But this guy, Seth Rowland, just too good enough, too good enough making blows, giving Matt Riddle some kind of ear in his, in his ear, like just doing whatever, he does, just mind, playing, mind fucking him, guys, mind sexing him, giving him the, the mind interaction. In, in to, I can't even tell you guys, but he was just giving it to him in terms of talk, dirty talk, trash talk, giving him as well the auto TD, giving him his own move as well. The bro Dallas to Riddle. Riddle was just not himself in that fight. And then at the end of the day, Seth freaking Rollins with a stump from the second rope. Second rope. And that took out Riddle. One, two, three. Riddle was finished. Look at him now. He looks like an idiot, Riddle. Look at that face. Just, just look at that face, guys. Riddle ended up losing his fight. Piss. But then came the main event, guys. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. The bloodline. You know Roman Reigns, my guys, guys. You know he's the one. And I expect the W because I'm not expecting them to follow with the script or because it's in Cardiff. Drew McIntyre wins, becomes the first crowned champion in a UK land, whatever it is, that is in 30 years. No way. I'm not having that. Yes, what a fight it was. It it started off really well as well, you know, just the stare down as well in Cardiff was just magnificent. You, had to, you just had to drink it in and take it in all the time, guys, because... Boy, oh boy, this was what I want. Just look at this Roman Reigns guy. Just pure dominance, you know, before even the fight. What he did to Drew McIntyre. And then Drew McIntyre getting his own back. But as well, you have to acknowledge the fact that Drew, while the fight was going on, Roman Reigns, for some reason, picked up the mic, looked at the crowd, and told the fans in Cardiff to acknowledge him. Do you know what happened? Drew McIntyre gave him... The clay book that eventually knocked him as well to the referee. And the referee as well got himself knocked out. And then Austin Fury came out to cash in his money in the bank. And you, do you think Austin Fury has been successful? Because he wasn't successful at the last time against, of course, the man himself from Suplex City, Brock Lesnar. This time, special guest that was in, in the arena in attendance. Tyson Fury, while, while uh, Fury himself tried to cash in his money in the bank, ended up getting his ass knocked the fuck out like it was Friday, you know? Bang! Fury was out. The match continued as it was. because So it was a failed attempt to cash in his money in the bank. Roman Reigns back into the fight as well. When the referee was knocked out and a new referee came in, Someone surprisingly came in while there was clay books, there was there was Superman punches as well, and there was of course a nice DDT by future shot DDT by Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns' cousin. Apparently, the Uso has a little brother. The Usos have a little brother, and he showed up distracting Drew McIntyre. And I thought, yes, this is the moment now. This is the moment that this guy wins. Yes. And guess what? Capitalizing 
Roman Reigns, the bloodline prevails and continues to be the undisputed champion. WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns prevails. My guy did it again with a spear. One, two, three, while Drew McIntyre was himself distracted. And who was this new guy? I don't know. We'll find out next time on, of course, SmackDown or maybe Raw. But yes, there is another member of the Bloodline, but it was one hell of a pay-per-view, guys. i like to know exactly, guys, what you guys thought of today's pay-per-view. Um, who was, which fight was the most interesting? Um, was it the Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre? Or was it Matt Riddle versus Seth Rowland? Did you even like Liv Morgan versus Shayna Bezler? But the guys, let me know in the comments as well. And for those, as always, remember your next pay per view will be out, and I will do your match reactions. I mean, your reaction. And of course, guys, if you are a Manchester United fan, this is a Manchester United fan channel. So make sure you do subscribe, smash that like button. Also, remember to share as well across all social media platforms. And as well, most importantly, press the notification bell so you know exactly when a new video comes, you'll be the first to watch. And this has been your boy, Ivorian Spice, as always. You remember to always keep it united. And remember to keep it red united as I'm back tomorrow, 4.15 p.m. UK time for the Manchester United and Arsenal watch along. So make sure you tune in for that. We shall see you next time, guys. Peace out and Godspeed. Peace.